In this particular section, we are going to talk and see uh, one particular fun product that is called Playground TensorFlow. Okay. In this particular applications, they have developed in such a way so that you can see each and every components uh, of a cell neural network and you can play with those networks you can add neurons you can you can select the select the activation functions for these neurons you can select the uh, learning rate for those neurons okay so you will you will enjoy this six and once we have completed this sections you will have some idea about like how internally deep learning is working okay so let's Try this uh, tensor playground. All right. All right. So we'll open this uh, tensor flow tensor flow playground URL, and uh, you will land in this particular page. Okay. So uh, let me introduce uh, some of the critical contents in this particular page okay uh, this there are four different kind of uh, classification problems are listed here one two three four we have selected the most basic one as of now and these are the these are the inputs and this is first hidden layer and this is output layer okay so you can add many uh, hidden layers and you can play with the learning rates, activation functions, and you can add the regularizations and regularization rate. And uh, you can add just the batch size, you can add just the noise, and you can uh, training and test ratio. Okay, all right. So, what we're going to do for the same problem with the default set of whatever they have, let's try to start our training. Okay, all right. We can kind of less than 50 epochs uh, the the model has learned pretty much to classify these two categories like these blue categories and this is uh, orange or yellow categories okay? less than 50 epochs with the learning rate 0 0.03 with activation function tang okay no regularization needed in this particular case okay now uh, I was talking about the representation learning uh, some time back during uh, giving the uh, inner picture of those deep neural network. Uh, in this particular example, you will understand it pretty well. You can see these are one, two, three, four different neurons are there in the first and only hidden layers in this particular neural network. The first neuron has learned to distinguish uh, to, to create a vertical line like this uh, like this okay to separate blue and uh, orange the second one has learned a uh, little bit of kind of uh, 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 little bit of angles uh, to separate this blue and in orange line orange classes Third one is a uh, little bit of different representation they're trying to learn, and fourth one is kind of uh, splitting the screens in corner diagonal way to classify those two uh, neurons, uh, those two kind of classes. Okay, and in these uh, in this particular hidden layer, sorry, this, we have two hidden layers. In this particular hidden layer, we have learned more complex representations of the, uh, the data. Okay, so here you can see the the loss like it has sub drop in this particular case. Like let's try to train it once again and we'll stop immediately. Okay. So less than 20 it has pretty much learned to separate uh, both the classes. Okay, if you want you can increase the number of hidden layers and uh, number of neurons in each of these hidden layers. Let's try it with the uh, other sort of uh, activation function. Let's try it with sigma function. Okay. We will start the process once again to train. Okay. It is taking a bit longer time. Now it is complete. So you can see it. 
the process has taken the uh, little bit of higher number of epochs to converge from uh, to classify those two different models okay and if you see the loss loss diagrams it is uh, not like uh, like tanch we had a sharp decline and then it was consistent in this particular case it was reducing gradually and here also uh, it has reduced so okay so let's try to increase the learning rate a little bit and we'll restart the process all right so now we can see within 30 or 34 epochs with the higher learning rate the sigmoid has uh, predicted the two classes almost properly okay so we'll set up the learning rate whatever initial default we had and we'll try the same thing with the other activation function that is a rectified linear unit okay we'll start our learning process within fraction of second it is learning that thing and you can see the sharp drop is uh, much sharper than whatever we had for tanch activation okay so similar sort of things if you want you can add many different formations of inputs like quadratic inputs and multiplications and mathematical uh, uh, equations for those inputs as well now what we're going to do we're going to take a little more difficult uh, challenge in this particular case what we have to do we have to classify these two orange and blue categories okay so visually we can understand like how these categories are classified but when you have to train the network how it will understand uh, this this content that is what we want to see okay so I will start with the uh, ReLU okay uh, let's start our learning process so till this point of time no converge 100 200 300 400 it is still not able to give the right result all right so let's try it with tanch we have executed 472 times but still not able to converge okay so it is also suffering due to the simplicity of the inputs okay almost 400 so no sign of the convergence sigmoid let's try it. sigmoid same okay so this is going very 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 slowly 200 so far but uh, no convergence happens okay so what we're going to do we're going to introduce a few more inputs okay so let's start with sigmoid first Right. so no such good progress okay so what we want to do let's remove these inputs let's add a couple, one more hidden layers okay and let's increase the number of neurons in this particular hidden layers all right so now we have three hidden layers and four neurons in each layers and we'll try with rail with the learning rate 0 0.03 let's see what happens now okay all right all right so still not the best result we are getting but it is trying its best to differentiate those two models with the minimum cost it is getting okay we add little more neurons in these tapes so and if we start it 
Let's see what happens. Okay, all right. It is uh, going to the right direction. Okay, you can you can see it. It's not uh, doing any more progress, but it is pretty much able to create the shape whatever we are looking for. All right. So what we are going to do now? Let's add one more hidden layer, and two more inputs okay we are taking a quadratic inputs as well so these hidden layers we are increasing one more one more let's see it. what happens as we have uh, many number of neurons and uh, hidden layers the converge process will take a bit longer time in this particular case okay and uh, and the miracle happens here so in 300 epoch 300 epoch pretty much we got some say to recognize each and every points for those two different classes with this safe whatever it has drawn and if you see it uh, in the first hidden layer it is trying to learn some very simple components okay these these things such like these these and the more we are going upward the more they will, the neurons will start learning more complex patterns and representations and this particular neuron is useless but uh, if you want you can reduce them okay so what we are going to do we are going to try it with higher learning rate all right so let's see what happens here okay it's not doing any any other progress so basically the other other gradient descent issues which I was talking on that day uh, when you have higher learning rate it will jump around the global minimum same problem is happening in this particular case so 0 0.03 is supposed to be the optimum learning rate in this particular case okay and so what we are going to do we are going to reduce the number of neurons a little bit all right so to have this training a little bit faster let's see how it works okay it is trying its best it's trying its best and this is what it has converged okay so in 300 epochs it is it is uh, almost able to classify those two categories properly what we are going to do now we are going to change the activation function and we want to try it with tanch with the same learning rate 0 0.03 let's see how tanch is conversion okay it is trying its best to adjust here and there and in 200 epochs it is not able to progress anymore okay all right all of a sudden around uh, 400 it has it is able to predict those two different classes almost properly and if you see these different different neurons you will see this first hidden layers they are learning this representation uh, in a simpler form and when it is going up it is trying to learn more complex representations to have the final hidden layers with the most complex uh, 
representation to predict the classes for those two categories okay here are different things you can try here are different things you can do you can increase the batch size okay let's see how it works This batch size is uh, pretty much very similar to the mini batch, whatever we discussed earlier. Okay, this is uh, learning rate and this is activation functions. These are the regularization to generalize your model to overcome the overfitting issues. Okay, and, uh, and this is basically uh, test and uh, train data split. Okay. So this is just to introduce you a little bit with this uh, particular tool. Uh, however, you can play with this. Okay, let's try it with a different, different uh, kind of challenge. Okay, uh, we'll try with four, four. We don't need these things. Let's keep the input simple. Four, four, three, two, and we don't need this hidden there as well. This is comparatively, comparatively simpler challenge all right so we'll start with tang with the learning rate 0 0.03 okay let's jump in 0.03 done so here you can see that within 65 epoch with the learning rate 0 0.03 with activation function tang the model is able to converge to predict the orange and blue classes properly okay and these these different different first uh, initial neurons uh, they are they are they are learning simpler representations and when you are going upward they are learning more more complex representations okay and you can see all three of them almost doing the same thing so if i reduce to one of them i think that is uh, going to help okay so it worked similar way okay you can play with this uh, utility you can note down this playground.tensorflow.org okay uh, you can come back and you can try with these one of these four models and uh, that's it this will help you to understand all these uh, individual components and how they are, they are influencing your model learning and your predictions. All right, so we have learned something new and we have learned some insight uh, details about how deep learning models are working actually on real life data.